In this video, I'm going to show you how to level or tram your bed, create a bed mesh, and then set a Z or Z offset on a 3D printer with a bed probe. You may be surprised to hear that you still need to level or tram your bed when you bought a 3D printer with automatic bed leveling. Well, unfortunately, this is very likely to be just a little white lie that 3D printer manufacturers tell to make setting up the printer sound a little bit easier. What 3D printers with a bed probe can do is create what we call a mesh, which enables the nozzle to follow any contours in the print surface after it's been aligned. However, there's nothing automatic about this process. We have to initiate it and tell the printer what to do next. Today, I'm going to show you how to do all of this. So I'm going to assume that you've never turned your 3D printer on, and I'm going to start from the very beginning. If you're further on than this, then just skip to the stage that you're at. I've added chapters to this video so you can easily find what you need. It's probably still a good idea to watch the whole video though if you're anything less than 100% sure that you fully understand all of the stages that you plan on skipping. Stage one is to manually tram your bed. To do this, you're going to need to manually move the stepper motors on your printer by moving the bed back and forward, by moving the x-axis carriage left and right, or by turning your z-axis lead screw to make the x-axis carriage go up and down. Moving the stepper motors manually though, will actually turn them into mini generators and they'll feed a small amount of current back to your control board. The faster you move them, the more chance there is of damage. The safest way to avoid damage is to actually turn your printer on, but then disable the stepper motors in the menu if you can. If not, you may find that the steppers can move freely anyway until you tell the printer to move one of the axes. If there's no way to move your steppers freely with the printer turned on, then unfortunately you are gonna to have to do it with the printer turned off, but just move everything very slowly. To get your bed springs to the correct tension, start by winding all of the adjusters off until there's no tension on the springs anymore. Then push down in the middle of the front of the bed until the springs are compressed to at least two thirds their original length. While holding it there, wind both the adjusters on the front of the bed until they just start to add more tension. Then repeat this process on the back of the bed. The reason I do it this way is so that I don't induce any twist in the bed by winding one corner down more than any of the others. I always make any big adjustments in pairs. Now move the nozzle to just above one of the adjusters and by eye, move whatever mechanism you have for changing the Z height so that the nozzle is very close but not quite touching the bed. Now don't touch the Z height again until we've gone all the way around the bed. Gently push the X carriage across to above the next bed adjuster and do the same. Be careful when moving the X carriage that the nozzle doesn't touch the bed. If it looks like it will, just wind the adjuster that you're moving to down until it clears. Once you've done the front two, move to the last two by gently pushing the bed backwards or forwards. Once the nozzle is roughly the same distance at each corner, we can move on to stage two. Stage two is to check that your bed probe is working and that homing the Z axis isn't gonna drive your nozzle into your bed. If your bed probe isn't working properly and you don't have a Z limit switch, then your nozzle will continue to drill down into your bed until it reaches the center of the earth. The best way to check is to move your Z height up until your nozzle is a good distance from the bed. And then with your hand ready on the power switch, tell your printer to home the Z axis. As everything starts moving down, trigger the probe with your finger. It should stop moving and will very likely throw an error. If it doesn't stop, then flick the power off and investigate why it's not working before going any further. Assuming that your bed probe is working, turn your printer off and then back on again. And then this time, place something on your bed under the bed probe, like a small box or a writing pad that can act like a spacer. Tell the printer to home and make sure it triggers on your spacer. It will most likely trigger twice and then stop. Once it's stopped, slide your spacer under the nozzle and make sure it clears. If it does, then you know that it's safe to let your printer home to the bed. If it doesn't clear, then you'll need to adjust your Z offset and repeat this test until your spacer does clear. If you have had to change your Z offset, make sure you save to the EE prom before you turn your printer off. We'll set the Z offset more accurately later. Stage three is to use your 3D printer's manual leveling process if it has one to drive the nozzle to each corner of the bed and set the gap at each corner the same. You'll need to preheat the bed and nozzle to sensible printing temperatures. Some printers will have a PLA preset that you can use, but if yours doesn't, then set your bed temperature to 50 degrees C and your hot end to 200 degrees. Once your hot end's up to temperature, make sure any filament is removed and that you give your nozzle a little clean with a damp rag. Don't worry too much about what you use to find the gap between the nozzle and the bed, as the thickness doesn't really matter too much. It can be a piece of paper or a feeler gauge if you have one. Just be sure to use the same thing on each corner and ensure that it's just touching by trying to move it and checking that there's a little bit of resistance, but it can still move. Go around the bed a couple of times to make sure the path of the nozzle is completely parallel to your bed. Stage four. This is where we create our bed mesh by telling our printer to auto level. 
Different printers will do this in different ways and you need to find the way to start the process on your printer. On my Artillery Sidewinder X2, it's a case of simply selecting Auto Level in the menu. On my CR10S Pro, you have to go into the Level menu, let it home and then select the Measuring button. However you start the process on your printer, the bed probe should probe the bed a number of times and then either stop or it may lead straight into the Z offset function. Again, you'll need to check the documentation for your printer, but if the printer seems to home in the middle and a small distance from the bed, then it's very likely that it's ready to set your Z offset. If your printer doesn't do this, then it's very likely that there's a separate option to set your Z offset like there is on this Sidewinder. If there is, find it and activate it. Stage five is to set our Z axis zero point. There are a couple of methods for doing this, but the end result of both is that the zero position of the Z axis is with a nozzle just touching the bed. You may hear people telling you this is not the case and that the Z axis zero position should be the thickness of a feeler gauge or a sheet of paper above the bed, but no, the nozzle should be just touching the bed when the Z axis is zeroed. The printer then takes all of its calculations from this point. If you set it to anything other than with the nozzle just touching the bed, then the printer just simply doesn't know where the bed is and all of the Z calculations will be wrong. One way to set the Z position is by eye. Depending on your bed surface, you could adjust the Z offset down till it just touches, then move it up. But I'd only do this if you have a glass bed. Something like a build tack or some other soft surface may be damaged by doing it this way. The other way is to use a feeler gauge of a known thickness and adjust your Z offset until it just grabs the gauge. Then you can remove the gauge and adjust the Z offset down by the thickness of the gauge. For example, I'm using a 0.05 millimeter feeler gauge here and on this printer, the Z offset is adjusted in 0.025 millimeter steps. Therefore, if I press the button twice, I've adjusted the Z offset down by 0.05 millimeters and the nozzle is in the correct position. Whatever method you use, it's now very likely that you'll need to save the mesh and Z offset. On my CR10S Pro, it's saved as I change the settings and I know this because it tells me on the screen. On my Sidewinder, it doesn't, so I simply hit the Save to EEPROM button to save. Stage six. Now we have a saved bed mesh and a perfectly zeroed Z offset, we need to tell our printer to use the bed mesh when it prints. To do this, we need to add a line into the start G code for our printer from within our slicer. In Cura, go to Settings, Printer, and then Manage Printers. Highlight the printer you wish to add the code for and then click on Machine Settings. In the box that pops up, you'll see Start G code and End G code at the bottom. If you have a G29 line, highlight it and overtype M420 space S1 space Z10. This tells the printer to use the saved bed mesh instead of probing the bed and using a new mesh for every print. If you want it to take a new mesh and use that for every print, then leave the G29 code. If you have neither of these codes, then add the M420S1Z10 text on a new line below the G28 home all axis line. Click close and any new print you slice from now on will use any bed mesh your printer has saved. If you make any changes to your print surface from now on, then you can simply run through stages four and five again to save a new mesh and Z offset. There's no need to make any further changes in Cura though. And if you update Cura, any changes to the start G code you've made should be carried through. It's always a good idea to check this though after any updates. You now have a trammed bed, a saved mesh, and your Z offset is perfect. If you want to see another video about setting up or calibrating your 3D printer, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.